Hello, it's some weeks since I've made a video and I'm very much looking forward to making a few more in the next few days. Um, I recently had a message, it's really good to get feedback from um, viewers. Um, thank you for your comments. I get all sorts of comments relating to cameras and I occasionally get questions about cameras as you can imagine. There was one the other day and they said um, a bit of a mystery what I actually did. Uh, well, um, I obviously do lots of photography. Um, I actually am still teach. Someone said, was I still teaching? I am still teaching. Um, I teach media actually in a school in Dorset and I do two jobs in the same school. I do uh, um, teaching part time and I um, the other part of that job um, I feel with being a technician in the same department. So it's a really nice combination of two jobs. Um, so I hope that's answered that question. Um, now cameras. What are we going to look at today? And we are back on Nikon and back in 1992 I bought a cheap um, compact camera. I was fascinated at that stage that there was a lot of new automatic focusing cameras coming out. They had been a lot of expensive cameras and at that point of my career I was starting in teaching and I, to be honest I didn't have much money and I saw this cheap Nikon. I think it was about £40. Might have been a bit cheaper. Um, and basically it was this uh, RF10. And the RF10 came out in 1992 and they had been a, a number of RFs um, dating back to 1988. Um, as you probably know Nikon made uh, a fantastic name for themselves in compact cameras with the likes of this lovely L35 which came out I think 92 sorry 82 82 10 years previously and they made uh, some very good compact cameras but they were expensive um, and there was definitely a demand for a cheaper camera and Nikon came out with the RF and this as I said is very basic. It's automatic loading. Just check there's no film in. Film goes in at the back here. Rhines on automatically. It has quite a nice Rhine angle lens. It's a 34mm 4.5 Nikon lens and automatic focusing, automatic flash. Um, quite useful it takes two AA batteries. This can be a real pain to be honest. These can snap off. Um, it's only a plastic hinge. The construction isn't fantastic I think. Well it was made for a price and you can see that. Um, I remember at the time I was a... I had very mixed feelings about this camera. I found it had the, because of the design of the lens here and it was so right angle, you had quite a lot of vignetting going on. Um, around the edge of photographs it was quite dark and while that might be a good effect sometimes it looked a bit, I thought at the time it looked a bit naff. To be completely honest, um, I didn't use it. I perhaps took three or four films in um, and they were mainly colour prints at that time. And then I bought a Pentax SPO, which I had for years, which I found was an absolutely fantastic camera. This at the stage, at the time I bought it, I was, to be honest, I was disappointed with it. So almost 30 years later, came to use it. Um, again and let's see how I got on when I actually used it again. These photos were taken in the Dorset town of Bridport and um, in the slightly industrial estate part and my initial reaction is it's okay the lens isn't as sharp as I would like. I've um, 
to my slight surprise, there wasn't as much finessing as I remember. There's a, I think there's a tiny bit at the edges, but it's not pronounced. Um, this is actually, although it was a RF10 I used years ago, it's actually not the same camera I'm using now because although this is now a, still a RF10, the, my original one, I did the stupid thing of leaving batteries in and um, they have corroded and I can't actually get the batteries out. Um, so I had some issues as you can perhaps see with the focus. The near is in focus on the left but the um, right isn't quite in focus. Um, it's... Um, the exposure is absolutely fine. Some images are um, sharp enough. Um, I'm not sure of the shutter speed on this and I did find there were one or two um, images that basically I had camera shake in. I suspect there's a very sort of simple program um, mechanism happening. This one of shadows was absolutely fine. Um, the camera is very easy to use. It is point and shoot. It's nice that you don't have to think about anything. The photos are acceptable, but once you start blowing them up, there is the lens, as I said before, isn't fantastic. And uh, as you don't know quite what shutter speed you are on, um, there are issues there. Um, as you can see, the print here is absolutely fine. And in some rates, this as because it's a uh, um, fit focal length you haven't got some of the issues you have with a cheap zoom maybe this is uh, preferable to a cheap zoom camera um, in a few weeks I'm testing a few other um, another Nikon um, which is a very basic camera so most of the images I took on this day were usable um, it, it was absolutely fine to use. If you find one cheaply, then have a go with one. Thank you for watching. As you can see, this last image, again, not the finest of images, but the camera's fine, but I can see why I didn't use it for long. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.